right? What's today's Gutenberg Press? The internet. The decentralization of information, and then because of that, the decentralization of currency in the form of crypto is disrupting power. Because the way that after the revolution of the Reformation in the printing press, control was still possible, though obviously not to that level, which is why we no longer have those absolute monarchies. But control in a nation state context was still possible to an extent because the money supply was controlled. Now what's happening is that the invention of the internet with the decentralization of information and in particular here the decentralization of currency in the form of cryptocurrencies is disrupting those power hierarchies and it's leading to this conflict now and we're in a moment when the printing press was invented the powers that be needed to try and hold on to that power as the 30 years war kicked off they eventually lost it but to hold on to it they became very brutal because they were losing their grip on power today to have the infrastructure in place that you can have a checkpoint Charlie society so that when the central banking digital currencies are in place, that infrastructure is already there because people were so scared they voluntarily allowed you to put that in place so that you can maintain your grip on power because what's coming around the corner is the decentralization of everything, of media, therefore of narrative. And of course, remember, whoever defines the truth gets to define reality. Decentralization of the economy through crypto, you no longer have the power to define the story and control the money supply. So the powers that be who are losing that power need to clamp down. A cashless digital track trace and a database society. Total enslavement is what they want because a bunch of sociopathic, crazy old people want to keep their grip of power. Yeah, no, no thank you. I, I prefer decentralization. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Zuckerdowski here of wearechange.org, and we have a lot of very important information to get into. As, of course, there's a full-scale conflict going on in Ukraine. We're going to be giving you the latest details of what's happening there. The possibilities of peace talks with Putin and Zelensky going to be meeting very soon. Will this disastrous conflict end anytime soon? Well, of course, we could hope so. But, of course, the long-term trajectory of what's going to be happening here is going to be a lot more complicated along with the consequences that the majority of people are going to be facing but before getting into that plus a lot more that poetic rant that we began in the beginning of this video was of course made by Mahid Nawaz who uh, essentially hit the nail on the head when it came to breaking down the current situation that we are all dealing with and of course the many troublesome years ahead as of course we're dealing with the situation and society that is absolutely absurd it's about to get a lot more absurd and and of course, this only happens because of the lunacy purported by the corporate media that essentially does the bidding of this ruling elite. This, as there is a coordinated PR talking point of us needing to pay higher gas prices in order to defend a democracy with absolutely bewildering Orwellian type style articles from Bloomberg literally telling you that if you earn less than $300,000 a year, it's time for you to take the bus, not buy a lot of stuff, replace lentils instead of meat, and of course, not have any fun. This is their elitist tips of your pound of flesh sacrifice that you have to give to the system that of course cares about you so much and is so generous to the rest of society. As of course, 98% of American households earn less than $300,000 a year. And, and telling 98% of Americans to, to stop using their cars, to stop having nutritious diets that are actually really good for them, to, to not have any pets, as the 1% of the world lives their lives, like they're some kind of gods and could do whatever they want is in my opinion peak corporate media hypocrisy and let's be honest there's been there's been a lot of it there's been a lot of disinformation there's been a lot of propaganda there's been a lot of information provided to us that supposedly is unbiased but absolutely either comes from an absolutely ignorant place or one that is carefully curated to have the outcome that a lot of powerful people want this gem was provided to us by the editor of the economist who decided to interpret his events how he wanted to see them for of course political power and when the corporate media is not spreading 
misinformation, fake news, muddying the water, creating more mistrust. Because, you know, if you actually cared about an issue, you would speak about it honestly and not distort it, not try to push propaganda, not try to lie to people, which absolutely does your cause a larger disservice at the end of the day. But when the corporate media is not doing that, they're also slandering and attacking anyone who deviates from the carefully curated talking points and larger agenda that they push against the majority of the public, as of course there has been an organized PR attack against Russell Brand that of course has been attacked by institutions like The Independent, a self-proclaimed media organization that of course has a lot of financial ties to Saudi Arabia, that are of course are calling for him to be censored calling him crazy and dangerous, all because he dares to have a conversation about what's actually happening right now instead of just believing what you're supposed to be believing at the current time that the establishment tells you to do so. Elon Musk had a very interesting piece towards this two minutes of hate PR propaganda bullcrap piece saying, quote, I watched some of his videos. Ironically, he seemed more balanced and insightful than those condemning him, going on and saying, quote, the group think among major media companies is more troubling there should be more dissent and even though we've been critical about elon before i definitely agree with him when it comes to these particular statements as of course these larger social media crackdowns are all about centralizing power and authority for the people who still wield it at the time that they do and this is why i created the best political shirts.com in order to share messages that can never be censored taken down especially in the real world as of course you could literally wear a t-shirt and either piss off a Karen or a Kyle or make some of the best friends in your life by giving out a political message that could make people think in the real world about what's really happening. The shirt I'm wearing right now is one of the shirts that we sell in our store right now and I think it perfectly picks the true reality of big tech social media and their larger influence on society, especially with the curation of their algorithms. I've been getting a lot of thumbs up for wearing these shirts. I have started a lot of interesting conversations because of this shirt in particular. And of course, that is the goal of the best political shirts.com to start the conversation, to spread messages that could never be censored. And in some instances also make people laugh, which uh, I think we need to do more than ever, especially during these very dangerous times. Get a shirt or, or don't, but at least check out thebestpoliticalshirts.com because I bet you scrolling through the large amount of merchandise we have will at least probably get your creative juices flowing and hopefully your mind thinking. Again, it's thebestpoliticalshirts.com. Link in the description. Click on it right now. Now, I, I think it's fair to say that the absolute crap show that all of us are involved in, that the world is involved in, is absolutely because of people's ignorance. Because of people not knowing what's going on, because of people just willingly going along with things being agreeable, not deciding to question things, not deciding to challenge things, just taking the easier way out is why we're dealing with the situation right now where you are going to have to take the bus everywhere to go and not even be able to eat meat. This Bloomberg opinion piece sounds like it's a suggestion. It soon probably will be a way of life with the way that things have been going and with the absurdity of our current fiscal financial situation, which of course is spiraling out of control because of record money printing, record government spending, reckless borrowing of money that of course this country doesn't have. And what's the corporate media's response to all of this? Well borrow and spend more money as CNN is now calling for more stimulus checks in order to deal with the soaring gas prices. Boy, oh boy, I wish someone would give them a lesson in economics and the money supply chain. And of course, a history lesson. What what happens with governments that print too much money out of thin air? And of course, a lot of these financial problems are being obfuscated with the conflict in Ukraine that of course the corporate media holds personally responsible for all of this. But as we know, they of course are trying to hide what led us to this crazy situation. And of course, it's only going to be a situation that escalates as, of course, the conflict in Ukraine also escalates as, of course, it adds to the larger problems that, of course, all of us are facing. And it is fair to say the more there, there is conflict, the more there will be financial problems. And we have to acknowledge there are some individuals who want more conflict. This as 10 
U.S. senators have just visited Poland, specifically on the Ukrainian border, and now are officially calling for a more direct U.S. involvement in this entire conflict, demanding more lethal aid to the Ukrainian people, with these 10 U.S. senators saying that the United States will need to constantly send military assistance to that country, as some foreign policy experts expect the situation in Ukraine to unfold just like it has in Afghanistan and in Syria. Long-term tribal limited warfare between the West and the East using their territories as intermittent playgrounds for the military industrial complex. As of course, sectarian violence is very easy to start, but very hard to end. And it usually lasts decades. As of course, the wounds of conflict are deep and they do not heal very easily. All of this as the president of Ukraine has been asking the United States to set up a no-fly zone to send them more lethal weapons, risking the entanglement of the West, which of course would benefit his country temporarily, but of course escalate this conflict, which even the Ukrainian president admits could start World War III. Zelensky now is saying that this is a possibility if peace talks do not work with Russia. This as the Ukrainian president went on CNN saying that he is ready to speak with Putin in any format at any chance in order to try to resolve this conflict. It's also important to note that there have been a number of peace deals offered on both sides, the latest of which was turned down by Ukraine, which of course is looking for security and protection of its people and country in the future. How can Russia guarantee that? Well, of course, that is a complicated question, as of course the conflict rages on in that country. And then these two men have the faith of their countrymen, of their citizens in their hands. And from my own personal perspective and opinion here, I could only hope that they decide to work things out and not endanger their people or the future of the world because of their political ambitions. There's a famous quote from a World War I veteran who lived to the age of 111 years, Harry Patch, who specifically said, quote, I felt then, as I feel now, that the politicians who took us to war should have given the guns and told to settle their differences themselves instead of organizing nothing better than legalized mass murder. And I would have to definitely agree with the sentiments of Harry here, as of course we're dealing with corrupted politicians and institutions that are known for their dishonesty and them creating policies and using government for their own personal gain and monetary wins. Everyone knows Putin is, of course, an extremely rich human being. Some people even speculate and theorize maybe one of the richest people in the entire world with, of course, an extensive amount of luxury yachts, hidden real estate, and money all throughout the country. We found out a lot about this through the Panama Papers and the Pandora Papers, which, of course, some journalists paid the ultimate price to tell the world about. And, of course, it's not just Putin who has to deal with a lot of corruption allegations. It's also the president of Ukraine, Mr. Zelensky, who was also found to have a lot of money in offshore bank accounts, according to the Pandora Papers that were released to the entire world. Now, why does the president of Ukraine have a network of offshore companies? Well, of course, he's a politician. And as most politicians, their corruption is forgiven and they're being promoted by, of course, the corporate media, by individuals like David Frum from The Atlantic, who said, quote, Ukraine may be the first example in human history of a country that under pressure of war is becoming more tolerant and more liberal. This as the president of Ukraine has just literally signed a decree combining national TV channels into one platform. He just unilaterally banned 11 opposition parties. There was also the execution of political representatives and there's also a lot of really bad videos out there showing human rights violations that are happening in the field of war by of course both parties that are involved here. Now, in the United States, I think it's very fair to say that we only hear the negative side of one story when in reality we are dealing with corrupted institutions and understanding that might help us find a way out of this total nonsense and insanity and lunacy. And I think understanding the situation from a full complex understanding is a lot more important than just getting one particular point of view. You're dealing with dishonest individuals who a lot of people have put their full faith in. And no matter if it's Putin or Zelensky or Biden, I don't care who it is. I think it's fair 
to ask all of these individuals to be open, transparent, not corrupted, and to start acting like adults here and to try to de-escalate this entire crazy situation rather than, of course, escalate it and only endanger all of us and at the same time financially wreck the entire world. Will this happen? Well, well, honestly, I'm not too optimistic for it, but there is an opportunity for this to happen as, of course, Putin has agreed to meet with Zelensky as, of course, the Russian president is, quote, ready to talk with the Ukrainian president, as of course, these politicians are going to be sitting down allegedly at some point and hopefully being adults here working things out to prevent the further utter catastrophe that has been unfolding in that country. I think Bill Burr definitely made a very good point surrounding this entire issue, saying, quote, everybody should just quit the military around the world, and that's it. It's done. We're not doing this anymore. You lunatics, go sit down and solve your problems another way. There's no world where you should watch somebody of any nationality have to say goodbye to their kids because two rich people are having a temper tantrum with each other and have decided to have a war. And I would definitely have to agree with the sentiments here by Bill Burr. He made a very interesting point. And I do believe if this was the larger kind of understanding, belief, consensus that we wouldn't have a lot of this nonsense that, of course, we are dealing with. There, of course, is another strategy here that is far more murkier, and that is you have to fight evil with evil. You have to match fire with fire, as, of course, this is the only way to stop future fires. And that's a future perspective that a lot of people are entertaining. That's usually the perspective of corporate media. But to me, that's the thinking of crazy people. And I might be wrong. And the other strategy might be right here. And I might have gotten some things wrong during this of course video report but if i did please let me know down in the comment section below of course i don't always get things right it's very hard to call things out especially with the fog of war especially with all the disinformation and propaganda out there we're doing our best to provide you the perspective for you yourself to make an informed decision about what you actually think. Of course, a lot of this video was my own personal opinions and perspectives of how I see things. And if you appreciated it and if it resonated with you, share this video with your friends and family members. If it didn't, you didn't like it, click the dislike button and let me know why. And if the people of the world could prove themselves to have honest, real discussions based on truth, based on merit, based on evidence, without freaking out emotionally, maybe the people that are selected to represent us might act the same way. It starts on a small level. It might be insignificant to you, but I think it matters from my own personal perspective. Civility, open conversation, open dialogue, I think are more important than ever because truly, I think it's very fair to say that we are dealing with the situation that is definitely going to become a lot more turbulent, a lot more serious, a lot more wild than a lot of people are expecting. That's just my perspective. And hey, that's why decentralization is the way to go from my own personal perspective. The only way not to get caught up in this madness, but I digress, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Buying the shirts on thebestpoliticalshirts.com, sharing these videos, and because you do, I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.